Hi, everybody. Welcome to another episode of... Co of Nope. See? I almost did the wrong show there. Of <laughs> Reverse the verse. Nope. That's... It's one of those God, mornings. Jared. Come on. That, that really wasn't on purpose. That, 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 that's me not knowing the name of the show. Star Citizen Live <laughs> Game Dev uh, Making Mountains. Uh, on the show... Uh, if you've never seen Star Citizen Live before, we have a couple different formats. This week we are on our game dev format, which is which is where we are going to hang out with one of our developers, our designers, our artists, our our people who work on the game, and explore a little bit about their process, uh, how they work, and what they do for Star Citizen. So joining me on the show this week is no stranger to Star Citizen Live, uh, Mr. Patrick Gladys. Patrick, how are you doing? All good. Fantastic. Do, do you know the name of the this show? This time from home. Huh? Do you know the name of the show? Because I don't, apparently. Star Citizen Live. Star Citizen Live. All right. So, uh, Patrick, you are a member of the uh, 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 Planet Content team, the Planetary Tech team. Well, what's, what's uh, correct me there, there, there's a bunch of different subdivisions. What do you do for Star Citizen? Let's just go there. Uh, we are, or I am part of the Environment Art team, specifically okay. uh, the Environment Art team from the Germany office. And uh, we almost exclusively handle all all the things um, organic, right? So that means planets, geology, vegetation. And since we are the content team that almost exclusively works with all of that stuff or produces all of these things, we are also the team that drives uh, the planet tech forward in terms of communicating with the engineers who are actually programming and building the planet tech and so we we it's basically the, a ping pong game between the, the the two the two of us you know the engineers and us and this is how yeah this is how we operate Right. And the last time we had you on the show, we uh, we were painting planets. We were using the the new painting tools to show how we can cover the surface of a planet. Um, mm -hmm. There's going to be some aspect of that involved today. So just in case you know, for people who have joined the project since then, or who didn't see your wonderful panel at Stars at uh, CitizenCon about it, uh, before we get into this, g give us a brief primer. What what does it mean to paint a planet? A painting a planet. Uh, meant something else a year ago than <laughs> what it does by now. Uh, as you know, we are constantly uh, pushing planet, uh, planet Tech forward and all the features that are coming with it. Um, so painting a planet means to uh, first um, actually do an artistic paint pass, which means applying color to the planet. And then what it means as well is applying all the other pieces of content that are necessary to complete a planet as well through painting. Um, and as I said, when when we had the Star Citizen live stream yet, uh, last time, uh, where painting was covered, all of these individual pieces of content, like the color, the objects, and the ground materials, all of them uh, were painted individually in individual passes. But uh, since then, a lot of stuff has changed, and we will see some of the painting uh, in this live stream as well. But I will not go into uh, super um, like much detail. But I will definitely show it off uh, a, a little bit. What we will mostly focus on um, will be the height map creation, though. Okay. Now the the. We've talked a bit about in ISC over the last quarter, uh, showcasing through sprint reports and stuff how the. Uh, painting tools have been evolving you know even since we we showed it last time uh what are some of the improvements uh that have been made over the last year at this point uh probably the biggest uh, improvement probably would be um a much simpler and more compact design of those painting tools um which means that whenever we do these painting passes and i told you you know that all all individual um, um, pieces of content have to be applied or had to be applied separately. With that simpler design, we basically we basically pack everything into one single brush. So um, it's it's basically a reduction, like four or five times quicker. You know, when we had to do actually like five separate painting passes before, mm -hmm. it's all reduced into one now. And, and was... the, go, ahead. The, no, go ahead. Sorry. And uh, the cool thing is. Um, all the color information and everything is 
saved dynamically in these brushes now. So whenever we want to change the color or change the, the, the objects or the ground materials, we can do so after all the painting is done and we won't have to repaint anything. So it's not just a more compact design and more simplistic design of the, of the brushes that we use and on the, the painting tools, but it's also a much more dynamic. So we won't have to do tedious reworks and, and repaints of something whenever we want something changed. We can simply pick another color and we'll automatically update all over the planet. And this will save us, as I said, lots and lots more time. Yeah, I mean, it was already pretty fast before. Like the, the Plantic V4 came online, that was already pretty fast. And then to hear, we, we did a whole we did a whole uh, a segment on an ISC, and I think a lot of the comments were, it goes, it, it can't really be that fast. And it's like, now we've made it even you know faster and less labor intensive. And the results have gotten better. I, I, one of the, it, it, you, you correct me if I'm wrong, because I am the layman here. But when I mm -hmm. look at the new results, when, when, I, when I look at the before and after, shots you know between you know the painting with the new tools today versus the painting with the tools that was done just a year ago uh it seems like things that there, there's a much better uh uh diversity in, in the elements you know you, you you see a much better breakup between the rocks and the plants and the the various foliage and stuff and, and the different ground coverings um the textures seem to be greatly improved I, 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 I'm not imagining that, right? The, t the textures, like the, the the gravel textures and stuff. We do, and I showed this on ISC, and I was uh, that the gravel textures alone seem to be way more detailed now than they used to be. Am I am I, am I imagining this, or am I right? No, actually not. Um, we, we have we have actually uh, gone through. I think it was two or three weeks, and we have reworked every single uh, terrain texture that we had before and replaced them with. I think it was 80 or 90 new ones mm -hmm. um, that are not just reworked, but they are uh, based on um, realistic data, like photogrammetry data. It is actually photo scanned real life material that that is now um, in our libraries that we can use. And uh, it's, 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 it's much higher quality. Uh, the, the definition on the ground uh, is much higher now, so it's more consistent and coherent with what you see on the rocks, which has also been improved and updated. And you know, it's it's one of these things we are always try picking, picking in the, uh, a couple elements of our entire pipeline, mm -hmm. um, and thinking about like how can we how can we improve this? How can we how can we raise quality, make this make make this look nicer, more consistent, more coher coherent, and such. And when it comes to the painting tools. Um, one important aspect that probably um, not many people think of right away when, when we talk about it or, or mention it like this, but uh, a speed increase for us means that we have more time to iterate, right? Uh, if I have to do one paint pass instead of five paint passes, that means I have five times as much time uh, or five times longer to spend on this content and really polish it out until it works uh, the way I, re I wanted to and spent spent more time raising quality, right. polishing things out, tweaking things, adjusting, and so on. So the process of uh, the process of making it faster and making it better goes a long way towards uh, one of the longstanding questions of, of how are we going to make every planet and every moon that we've set out to make? Mm. It's 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 this it's this you know the, this growth curve of you know as the tech improves and as things get better and things get faster, that's how we're going to be, it begin to work at scale. And we're already seeing that in the a bit in the creation of the pyro. Now we're not we're not talking about pyro here. But uh, it's been it's been really delightful to see just how far you guys have been able to come so quickly uh, as far as the the, the the groundwork now. And of course, we will be sharing more and more about Pyro over the next you know, several months. So uh, let's get to what we're doing today. We've set the table enough. We've we've recapped a bit. And we've caught up with other things. Uh, today, you said we're exploring height map stuff. So uh, at this point, I'm going to turn it over to you for a bit. Uh, if you're watching live on Twitch, remember you can submit questions with the word question in capital letters surrounded by brackets. Uh, and then our community management team uh, will pull it out and send it on to us. Uh, remember that Patrick is an environment artist for planets and stuff. So if your question is about 
uh, when will this game feature come online? That this wasn't the show for that. If it's it's when will space stations get this? He doesn't work on space stations. It's the planet side stuff. So planet side art related stuff. That's our topic. That's the stuff Patrick will be able to speak to today. So Patrick, if you want to share your screen, I'll turn it over to you and I'll let you uh, let you drive for a little bit. All right. That's so. Do you see my screen? In a second, Zoom is put it on the wrong screen. There we go. Uh, now we see your screen. Oh, good. You see Substance Designer? Yep. Fantastic. All right. So um, as you already said, Jared, we are going to take a look at um, a bit more uh, like an in-depth look when it comes to height map creation. Some of these things uh, changed as well. Uh, you have talked about the CitizenCon um, CitizenCon demo that we have done in 2000, I think by the end of, it was the end of 2018, I think so, mm -hmm. um, where we showed off the, the process here. Uh, but since then, a lot of things changed and it has to do with the swap for, from V4 to, no, from V3 to V4. Um, and yeah, uh, we thought let's, let's have a bit of fun. Let's create one of these height maps from scratch. And uh, by the way, explain some of the changes that have happened how it uh, affects us as the art team, how much time uh, we get back from this, um, how, how it affects quality and so on and so on, you know? Uh, so, yeah. How, 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 how would you describe this shape? What, what, what would you say this shape looks like? This shape looks like a paraboloid. <laughs> this is official, like, this is, you, you can basically swap uh, shapes here and the official name for this shape is a, par a paraboloid. paraboloid, but uh, I refer uh, to it as a simple blob, so <laughs> All not, right. uh, not very scientific, but whatever. Uh, so yeah, let's take a look at the editor real quick. So this is a, a slightly modified version of Microtech that I have here. And if I fly around, you can see that I have my my blob pervoloid shape um, on the planet already. Looks very natural. Looks very natural, right? But this is usually, um, you know, or one of the many ways that you could start with. Um, what you can see, though, is that, you know, the how the color is distributed. If you look at all the other height maps around it, you, you have you have decent, you know, visuals it kind of all makes sense you can see that there are mountains and then there are valleys and they're filled with some gravel and such and it all follows the shapes nicely and so uh it, the same thing happens for this shape but you can see how this flatland here that has this swirly like a swirly pattern to it kind of creeps up our our half sphere here and hmm. it has to do with how um our height maps blend together. It's not like we can simply produce or throw in this height map texture and it will always be the exact same or this exact uh, cutout and visual because a lot of things happen in the editor on top, right? That might influence the, the visual or the look of our height maps. Um, let's take a look over here. You can see that this blob appears many more times all over the planet. And since it's really ge a geometrical shape, the data uh, that you can see on it looks kind of janky right now. Uh, this is and obviously sometimes, a, a very young planet and it's preteen years going through <laughs> some uh, acne issues. Something like that. But you can see that, you know, sometimes these shapes blend together. <laughs> sometimes we get we get multiple frequencies of these things blending together and forming entirely different formations, and this is this is the um, this is something we have to take into account. Um, but it's also the beauty of uh, of our planet tech in general, because from one height map, by shifting it around and making it blend with itself and blend with all the other surrounding height maps, we get very very nice happy accidents like these that produce very interesting results. So let's go back to our original one here. So as you can see, we have this elevation and it's, it resembles exactly this texture. Um, dark pixels basically mean there's 
no elevation happening or basic or dark pixels mean in this case because okay i won't get into too crazy technical details here but if you look at this one i have changed the the values of it slightly so the dark is gone right mm -hmm. so why why did i do that um if the pixels here on on the on the outer outside of our blob were dark it means that the height map on the planet surface would be actually be pushing down but if we want a flat mountain that is simply just bumping up then we have to constrict it to a gray gray color value and okay. from gray upwards our height maps will be bumping up and gray downwards they will be bumping down i can demonstrate this quite easily by for instance just famous last words here i can demonstrate this easily yeah 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 Ten so minutes later. <laughs> no 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 <laughs> i'm a profession <laughs> oh those are other famous words <laughs> <laughs> I'm risking it, right? All right. So I have uh, just added another tiny blob, and I'm going to put it in here. You can see that the gray is our uh, default base plane. And now that I have added this, these dark pixels, you can see that this blob here is represented, and it actually bumps down. Might not be super visible, but... Oh, wait, I forgot this one. Yeah. So now... Now you can clearly see that it bumps oh. down, right? So um, this is fundamentally how we have to think of uh, the te our textures and all the colors or the, the values in our height textures. This is actually something, you know, it's not specifically to us. This, is, this functionality is uh, very, very common in, in most game engines and, and other games are using it uh, precisely the same way. So yes, let's revert this one back. And you can see it and, updating, right? And if you if you made the uh, the second blob there a uh, lighter color, it would be a uh, another mound next to it. Uh, yes, precisely. Um, a lighter color. Yeah, you could easily you could easily, for example add multiple elements. Like for example, I'm increasing the tiling here and now I have four of them on one texture. So what happens if I export this, right? I'm just gonna export this to the engine right now. And then you you already see that something happened, but the height map didn't update and it some, has something to do with our planet. We have to reload the planet that goes quite quickly. And we do have our four blobs. And the cool thing is all the color and everything else is adjusting dynamically to it within a second. So I don't have to manually go in or retweak something or adjust the, the trees or the ground materials or, or anything, anything really. I can dynamically swap out this thing with um, anything I like. But uh, yeah, these are just... Um, these are just a couple like very simple geometrical shapes. So how can we make this more interesting? Um, just to also demonstrate how we could attempt to to if 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 it really was like a single mountain like this one or a single large hill or something, how could we make this more interesting? We have a couple nodes in Substance Designer that allow us to detail these things out. For example, like a terracing node. Uh, most of these nodes. And there are a couple of, of them. Um, we have built ourselves to, um, yeah, sim simplify the or speed up the process and and have things that allow us to to simply put in the details that we need or like. Um, other other games or in in like previously in the very beginnings when I joined early on, we weren't even using Substance Designer for it, but we decided to go for it because it's um it's a it's very nice. We we can basically replicate. If we are missing anything, we can replicate it in Substance Designer, build our own custom nodes that do precisely right. what we need instead of diverting back to another software. And that keeps our uh, pipeline quite tidy. And nodes are really useful uh, 
for 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 going back and identifying and tracking changes that happened, you know, six, seven, eight, nine steps ago. Exactly, and it's all dynamic. Yeah. yeah. So this looks more like a cake now, but let's export this one. Yeah. So I've added I've added terracing now, right? Like a cake. <laughs> See, this looks odd, but if I reload the planet, one second, blop, and we have our cake on the planet. And you can see how the color, again, automatically adjusts. And the bedrock is automatically sitting on or apl being applied where the slopes are. But it, you, you can also see that there's this part here where it's, where it's you know, it's not these layers are not continuous. And that's something I mentioned before is the the surrounding height maps, they start blending into that height map in order to fuse all of the elements together to not have any weird seams or cutoffs or hard repetition. We blend all of the data together so that in, in the end, it looks like a nice, continuous, consistent landscape. So this is still quite geometric. Mm -hmm. um, Although I've, I've seen I've seen things like that before. I I grew up next to a uh, a quarry actually as a kid. And oh nice. And and the mountain what what started as a mountain at one point ended up being a very terraced looking <laughs> thing as they were slowly you know systematically ripping into it. So I've actually seen that exact structure or very similar to that structure in real life. Not naturally uh, occurring, but. Yeah. Oh, let's let's make this more similar to what you know then, um, because I can invert the entire thing, right? Mm -hmm. And then this is a little more quarry-like, but still very geometric and unnatural looking. And I have to adjust these values because it's still bumping up and not down. So that would actually result in a very very awkward um, visual. Yeah. So I'm tweaking the, the, these. The, the quarry I was talking about was actually a mountain. It was when, when I was oh. when I was five. It was very big, and when I was ten, <laughs> it was smaller. When I was fifteen, it was smaller. And uh, I actually drove past it about two years ago for the first time in a decade, and it's almost completely gone now. They've almost completely just destroyed the mountain. Hmm. But 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 when I was growing up, it looked very much like that. They were systematically whittling it down, terrace by terrace by terrace. But yes, this this hmm. also looks like this looks like the traditional dig, you know, down. Yeah, down. yeah. This is how I know quarries. There's a yeah. big one uh, close to my hometown, and they they look more like this. Um. So, what I have done now is I basically inverted the entire thing and defined the ranges here so that we have a, our grain gray default plane, and all the other values here are just getting darker and darker and darker which means it's bumping down. So this is what we get. So now we get this white plane um, cutting through. So what could that be, right? Um, it is actually the ocean level. We have bumped down our height map so much that we are hitting, um, we're, that we're going past the ocean level. All right, so, so the system at this point automatically fills the ocean in, but what if yeah. you were is there a way to cut the ocean out of this? Because like, um, um, there's, there's no ocean around you, obviously. Uh, we have a method of cutting in holes into the terrain, specifically mm. for caves and such. Um, I think it also works for the ocean, but um, generally we don't do that because we simply, by adjusting the entire elevation of the planet, we decide where, where the ocean should show up and where, gotcha. where it should not show up yeah so uh yeah and then i told you about our custom nodes uh, so we can take this and transform it to something more natural looking right so i'm going through oh there from you something go. very geometric and i can adjust these uh i can adjust that noise that frequency that we are adding to these edges here uh, to produce a more realistic result so what, what is that node doing? Uh, like, it's basically taking the existing information and starts pushing these things in and outwards based on based on a noise, based on a mathematical noise, something like this. 
Hmm. Okay. Uh, how? What? You know, like, let's say something similar would be this here. Wait, I'm gonna take another of our no nodes, which is called Vortex. And I can, for example, put in whatever, really. And let's do it like this. So I have this noise up here. And I can put it into the vortex node. And it's driven by this bottom noise. And by adjusting this, you can see that I can start swirling and moving the existing information around. So this is something very cool uh, that you can do. Um, very interesting alien or even lava formations with. I hooked it up into um, an inflate node now. So all all the bits and pieces. If you look if you look at this string here, mm -hmm. it gets inflated. So now all these shapes are pushing into one another and creating a more like 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 something is flowing or something has been pushing these these things around. Or like a dry, it looks like a dried lava bed to me. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, like, yeah, for like, example. Like lava had been through here before, you know, and it's all dried and cooled. So just for the fun of it, uh, let's put it in here. <laughs> this is looking very very harsh, right? Uh, because. We didn't adjust our ranges, but if I do so, if I give it a more reasonable range to live in, I can constrict it maybe even further because these these shapes are quite quite intense. Okay. Mm -hmm. So now let's export that and take a look at it here. You can already see the data adjusted. There we go, but the height didn't. So now I reload and the height adjusts, and there we go. Hmm. See, I didn't even detail this out uh, at all, but it's giving me quite a funky result. So if we ever were to do an, a weird alien planet that has these odd shapes due to very harsh wind They're all alien swirls. planets, Patrick. <laughs> They're, They're all, all alien, alien planets. <laughs> We are also an alien planet. That looks cool. Yeah, right. It's something that we uh, we don't have yet. Okay. It's a good example. It's a good example of how the existing tech can be used to push things in new and exciting ways. Mm -hmm. Right. Not not everything new requires new tech. You know. So you know, there, there's still a lot of no. there's still a lot we can pull out of the tech that we have at this moment. So if we go back to to our little quarry. Um, this is with the landform node applied, so this noise that starts deforming everything a little. And then I hook it up to a sediment node, which adds a little bit of sedimentation on top. So you can see now, it's like the, the soil started sliding down a little yeah. and accumulating. Then, similar to how we did before with the swirly shapes, we can we can inflate or deflate this a little to to sharpen up some of these uh, features, and then export again and check in the editor. And the cool thing is, someone can be, let's say, uh, Pascal. Pascal is uh, also not unknown. Um, he has been on various shows multiple times, right? Mm -hmm. So let's say he he's working on the actual painting of the planet while I am defining out all the local height uh, data and information, just as we're doing right now. And I'm just working through it. And then Pascal comes by and says, hey, you know what? I finished the painting and I get his latest changing uh, changes uh, from the server. And I see all my height maps with Pascal's updated painting. Within like literally thirty seconds, I just need to reopen. I might need to reopen the editor one more time, but uh, that's about it. This is so now. Cool. Now that we have applied, huh? I'm just saying this. I was muttering to myself. This is pretty cool. 
and uh, yeah, now since uh, we have uh, we have applied this noise to the to this geometrical shape that we had before, and it looks a lot a lot more natural now. I think it's something similar to the mining pits that we already have on Hurston. Now that I think about it, uh, there are some mining pits on Hurston. Yeah, so they that, might not look exactly like this, but they feature similar visuals. Yeah, I like this one a lot. Uh, one of the questions from the chat: uh, mm -hmm. How many of your nodes? Do you have that are custom made or scripted, and uh, do you have a favorite node? That, that, that do you have like a go-to node? Hmm. So the custom ones that only I did are are these one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, eleven, twelve, thirteen, and then there are a lot of nodes that Sebastian did. You know. Because he's the techie guy, so mm. these are my non-tech artist notes that just give me <laughs> funky visuals. But he he does like crazy stuff. He does he does the intense things, like um, like almost simulations on a two D basis, for example, or erosion node. So let's, for example, oh let's let's do something a, a little more from scratch. So let's combine one of my nodes with some of Sebastian's nodes, right? So let's go for the landform node and let's let's take a look at uh, a simple noise. Sorry if you hear the emergency cars. It's uh, no. Frankfurt Central. So we have a very simple up and down. And I'm putting it into this landform node and I'm exaggerating the node properties here. And you can see how the existing data gets shifted around. So this, this is a, a very cool note because I can basically make something very terrain, um, very terrain-like or very believable terrain out of just two notes. Oh. See how, because the, the idea behind this note was how do land masses form, right? Land masses form by, you know, constantly or not constantly, but sometimes uh, being moved around or shifting into one another and deforming and fault, like even faulting and all of that stuff. Uh, so I thought like, how cool would it be to just have one node that simply gives you that result in an instant, right? Yeah. So this is already quite believable uh, when it comes to the basic shapes. And, and now I can take this and further detail it out. But before we do so, let's, let's just simply check it out in the editor as we always do, because ultimately how it looks like in Substance design, Designer doesn't interest me that much. I need to know that it really looks great in the editor, right? Oh, so now like another of one of these happy accidents happened. I can okay. see my my features, but what 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 happened here, right? I can I can double check here. These values are all like be below gray, right? So this right. thing should be bumping up but it's bumping down so i need to adjust that maybe adjust the range is not have it be too extreme oh actually like this sorry okay and there we go now you can see the the visuals that i get in, in the substance design of viewport are already highlighting these tips red that means you know they're high so uh, it's it's high elevation, so I can export this again, and you know this is already quite interesting. I don't yeah. I don't hate this. Right? Uh, if I reload again, just by changing these values, I get a completely different visual. Suddenly, like you know, it's 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 bumping up my landscape. This look how it looks from the top. You know, you can see these forms deforming and shifting into one another. It's quite cool. It's a very good base to work. Uh, to work yeah. from the, the the scale is interesting because when we look at it in substance designer mm -hmm. it's 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 i i'm seeing it on like a much more like macro scale when i see it in, when, I, when yes. I saw what you were in macro in substance designer I, I i see that and i look at something like that and i expect that to be like an entire mountain range and then mm -hmm. but because this this uh uh this particular height map is only mapped to this one little area here it's actually a much more condensed thing Exactly. I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know if I'm explaining myself. Uh, but uh, remember when I told you about how our um, 
our height maps are splatted on the planet. And sometimes right. if there are two right next to one another, they will be blending together as well. So we can check that out as well here, like simply by flying over and seeing how it all behaves. So look at this. This is the exact same height map, but it's but it's it sits here multiple times and blends together and forms an even greater landscape, even greater mountain range. Instead of just being a single dot on the planet, it gives you that that individual mountain. And then, you know, if I if I would like to detail this out, um, let's take one of these tools here, and and this is where we and we're not getting into the painting as much now. But um, if I wanted to, I can take Aslam's heavy spruce tree areas and be like, okay, you know what? I want the spruce trees to live on this plane here, and I click in here once. And there we go, spruce trees. Some of the stuff, is, some of the other things are uh, bleeding in. You can see that has to be adjusted. So um, this is where, you know, we start polishing things out and such. Uh, really clean that up. And this is without any detail passes. And you can kind of see that here, that the data looks... And it, even after the detail pass, uh, there might be some areas where you get to see... Um, wonky wonky color application like this um but again uh, all of this stuff are the bits and pieces that we continuously look at and and be like okay how can we improve this um let's polish this out let's improve this and we are making progress so all of that stuff that uh you might encounter on the planet and still looks like huh, what's what's happening here and you know we, we are probably looking at it at it already and and figuring things out for it but we have our priority lists uh, that we need to work from. Uh, so let's take the same mountain. And we said we would like to reuse one of um, Seb's node, nodes. This is like a really cool node. Erosion it really applies. You know, no, what it, what it says. It applies erosion to, um, to whatever you put into it. So let's give it a couple values to work from. Mm -hmm. Sediment strength zero, thermal erosion angle. Let's go for something like this. And I'm bumping up the iterations here and setting this up. And trying to see what it gives me. See if we can see something in the viewport. Okay, uh, let's try something. Something is off. I'm gonna try something else. Okay. It's no, no, no big deal though. Um, it is something. Oh yeah, we can show the dy dynamic flow. This, this is. Also very similar to erosion and quite visible and doesn't need to uh, to to uh, render as, as long. So let's increase the flow depth here. So you can see now that what what happens what would happen if um, you know rain started having an effect on the site map. And I can hook it up to this flow node. I'm gonna enlarge this here. And you know, white is the peak of our mountains, and then the darker it gets, the, the lower we go. Mm -hmm. But you can see that I can dial in this this hydraulic erosion, this flow here, as I like. It's a very complex node, very cool stuff. Yeah. Uh, definitely increase the quality of our um, existing height maps a lot. So what I can do with this now is I can dial it in subtly. And now pipe it in to our export nodes. And then you get all of this stuff, right? A lot more detail, but what looks like a subtle, you know, like a subtle blend here is actually quite extreme in terms of elevation. So I need to dial it back even more until I, I get a result that I like. 
See, this looks a lot, a lot healthier now. Hmm. Maybe even lower. You know, the, the player experience is something that we have to really consider at this point as well, because when we create these height maps, uh, we are speaking of, you know, elevation changes and frequencies and also bumpiness. So if I was ever to do something crazy like like this. <laughs> no, if, if, if I would really like our ba backers to hate us, right? You know, have fun driving around in here, right? <laughs> that, that, that's obviously an extreme example. Uh, let, let, let's see it. Oh, you really want to see it? Oh, my God. Let's see it. You don't... Oh, God. Jared is always making me do stuff, guys. It's crazy. Hey, you're lucky I don't make you do Devil's Town. <sighs> Please don't. <laughs> Please don't fire me for this. Okay. All right. <laughs> it's quite bumpy. I have dialed it. I have dialed it down a lot, but it's quite bumpy. Could probably exact. Oh no, this is another height map already. Yeah, yeah, Let's yeah, go yeah, over there, here. There, you go, yeah. there, there it there is. You there it is. You know, so this this doesn't work. Um, but it, it's it's fine. I mean, we also wanted to talk about limitations and what we can and cannot do. Right. Yes. Just so because you can do a you thing see that doesn't mean you should do a thing. No, absolutely not. And we have our strict rules and uh, for our workflows to prevent these visual errors from happening, right? Because first of all, how would you drive your cyclone through this, right? It's crazy. It's not, this is, this is not enjoyable oh. at all. Um, I mean, rocks are all, already an issue, right? Wh which we try to solve now, which is great. Uh, but you also see that the data, it's so, it's sh so much elevation data and the, the contrast that, that is happening here. Um, and the planet tech picks up all Everything. these little things and yeah. starts starts jamming all this data in between these crevices and cracks. So this is something that we should definitely not do, Sven. Uh, we, we are very, very cautious, but let's let's go for um yeah. no, let's it, go it, for the same thing but a, a more healthier approach. Yeah. No, it's it's it's, it's good to showcase yeah. that. It's, it's good to showcase that. It's it's mm. it's always important to remember that. You know that it's 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 one of the reasons you can't leave a procedural system up entirely to the procedural generation. It's it's why these things have to be validated by artists and uh, level designers and stuff like that because you know the the full breadth and scope of what's capable is not necessarily always a good thing. It's you you have to use tools responsibly, and we just showed a very irresponsible use of the tools. Yeah. So that 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 was useful. That was good. Okay, but let's show a more responsible uh, approach, yeah. right? So another note, because if we if we don't if we don't detail things out, um, these areas will look a little you know a little flat, and the the planet tech needs little pixel variation to pick up on all of these little crevices to to achieve things like these where where one biome is creeping in through the crevices of another biome and therefore creating this, this interesting mix, right? This result right here, for example. Um, so we cannot leave it too flat, but we also want it to have a reasonable amount of detail, which is what we have done with this node now. So I've added the, the flow, right? Which is still in there. But now I have thrown, uh, maybe, maybe, let's maybe show it again. So this is without. This is with just the flow, um, also based on one of Seb's node, and then the detail soil node, which which I have built to just quickly generate some of that close up nice. uh, break up on top, and I can basically de uh, decide if I want a simple noise, um, or if I want it to be a more of a dry soil look. So now I can sharpen this up and reduce the opacity here this is something we have to do individually but you now you see that it resembles more of a more of a, a dried out patchy kind of look right so again like maybe before 
yeah, this is without, and this is without some detailed soil application right now. See, it's just these little tiny bumps, they, but they do make a difference. They absolutely do make a difference because our new painting tools, they can pick up on the slightest pixel variation. And therefore we can assign biomes to, you know, I could probably assign a biome to, to this patch and this crevice individually. You know, and and in, in the editor, that would be a couple meters apart. Um, so, yeah, let's export that again. Yes, let's get rid of our nightmare terrain. <laughs> uh, if you have any questions, uh, I'm going to take them gladly. Yeah. Um, folks have been asking uh, if the system allows you to paint a planet uh, and automatically use the correct material based on a planet temperature, size, atmosphere, and stuff? Or do you have to go in and set all of those things individually each time? Mm. So it is something that we have been discussing in the team as well. And yes, there is, a, uh, there is an option. Uh, you, you see that... Okay, let, let's let's let's. I have destroyed. Uh, don't don't. Uh, we have wrecked. I have right yeah. Now. We have wrecked it a little. Yeah, that's but that's fine. Um, if you take a look at this square over here, right, it's something that we have already discussed, right? Um, I can take, for example, the ob obsidian dark uh, biome and paint it down, and you can see that it automatically gets applied here, right? Mm -hmm. So what we could do, because this texture and each and every corner of this texture resembles um, specific humidity and temperature situations, uh, like uh, the top right is cold and dry, the bottom right is uh, hot and dry, the bottom left is um, cold, no wait, cold, dry, uh hot dry warm, cold wet hot wet warm dry warm wet and then cold wet yeah exactly so i could basically go in and and paint something paint something in that resembles the, or that would uh, logically resemble some um climate for example if if, if it was earth right uh, i could where it's, where it's cold and dry, I could put my Arctic areas and really paint this square out completely un, unrelated to any of any planet or, or anything really. And then we could throw any data at it and it would redistribute this data uh, logically. So no, we don't, the, the answer would be, we, we don't have to go in and uh, adjust the painting all the time and repaint our biomes. And because you can see even even after, or even only this local height map here, it already adjusts to the new data. And the same thing is happening globally. So it's the, it's the very, oops, sorry. It's the very, very same logic be, being applied there. So uh, just by adjusting our workflow slightly, we could totally do that, yeah. yeah. So this, this height map that we've been working on, uh, we, we've seen that it's, it's in this one place we focus on, but we also have seen that it's replicated in other places. Yeah. Uh, how, how, what's that breakup like? Uh, how many different patches are there on a planet? How do you, how do you keep these things from being too repetitious? Oh. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> the power of DevTools. Um, you can see that what we have been adjusting and modifying right now is... Uh, index or patch number three, right? You refer to it as patches. Uh, it's actually okay. Um, we tweaked patch number three. Right next to us it's, is patch number zero. And let me show you something. Um, we have a list in our planet editor tools. Whoops. Oh, let's actually put it in here. It's okay. So this is something that we should that we don't show off quite frequently, but you can see that we have our ecosystems and what we call as ecosystems are all the height maps, right? This is the list of all the height maps that we use on all our planets. We have, we have hills, we have ice dunes, we have the mining pits. Or you can actually also let's let's do it properly here. You have a preview of all of it here. You have 
the mining pits, you have mountains eroded and all of that stuff, right? So it's a, it's a, it's a huge library of height maps, yeah. all kinds of flatlands, beaches, and so on and so on. So what I can do is simply select that second patch and for instance, fill it with, um, fill it with something entirely different, which is, uh, let's do mountain billowy. Mountain, yeah, mountain billowy O2. That's my favorite. All right. Let's jump back to our spot. Oh, that was actually three, not two, sorry, three. Whoops. And now turn this off so you can actually see what's happening. And this is a good demonstration of the question that was asked previously. See, these are the, the billowy mountains, and you can see that the data already um, adjusted. But if I go back and put in something entirely new now, blop, see, everything moved with it. Um, let's take some, let's take a height map that you guys have actually never seen before. It's not on any of the current planets yet. You saw it here first. <laughs> <laughs> See, I can just I can just go through this library and decide like okay, what mountains could fit best, right? And I can I, I can define uh, as as I've shown before. So you, you see these funky colors, right? It's zero to fifteen. So we have fifteen patches, fifteen slots that we can fill. So I can decide on a lineup of 15 different height maps. That's, yeah, there's a single volcano right here. Yeah. Now it's 15 different height maps, but each height map is used differently as well. Yeah, so we can. Is, it's not just a repeat every 15. Well, that's cool. Get closer to that. I want to see that. You can see where bedrock is automatically we get these bedrock assets spawning in and defining out these slopes because you know it, it is just displacing uh, upwards so if you want more silhouette from it you have to um put assets on top which we scan uh, scan sorry scatter on top procedurally as we do with anything else and that's how we can detail these out Uh, yeah, sorry, I would, before I asked you to zoom in on that, we were talking about how each version of those 15 are still different from each other. Uh, different, different height. Yeah, it's 15 unique, individual, completely different height maps. Yeah, but but each version of three is not exactly the same as, as we've seen at the beginning. How 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 does it t how does it make each version of, no of uh, height map three different? Okay, so. Um, it is, it is the exact same texture every single time, but if I get in that um, volcano again, then... Like, like, like when, when, when we had that blob at the beginning, some places we had one blob, some places we had two blobs, some places... Exactly, we had blobs exactly. And together. it's... Um, maybe that's not the best. Let's take this one, for instance. Hmm, not very visible, too. Yeah, the blob was probably the best example for that, but... Fundamentally, it's the thing that I've already explained to you. Um, let's show this one again. So the, the third patch here is isolated, right? If there's no third patch around it. Mm -hmm. But if we um, check this spot, for example, there are two, two patches um, next to one another, right? So what we do in, like what the planet tech does for us, let's take these mountains, for instance, it takes a height map and then it starts shifting it around and then it starts blending it with itself so you get you will get to see a, a somewhat new and unique look every single time you pass by this height map because it's it's blended together with its surroundings in a new way every single time gotcha. so yes it is it is a little different every single time but it's still the same texture yeah. we so we just, you know, we uh, have these tricks and, and, and processes that, that allow us to make it look super unique by shifting the information around, blending it with all its surroundings. And the cool thing is every other height maps do the same, you know, and by 
by that you get this huge mumbo jumbo of, of 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 blended height maps and every everything looks kind of unique that's cool so 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 one version of three is blended with two and four so it looks one way and then another version of three is yeah. blended with 14 and 15 so it looks yeah. different so every height map affects uh, all the other height maps that's cool all right. ice dunes yeah so um i think Unless you got one more thing to show us, we're actually done. Yeah, I I do time. have one more thing to show. I think I think it's a really cool example to show. Um, we have been working on on very very as you can see, we have done this tiny example here, right? We have done the blob. We have done this um, what we have what we see now. So this is um, another graph. Let's take a look at this. Um, this one, for example, is utilizing a, a melt node that we have that kind of streaks through our terrains and, and resembles more or less some, something like a lava flow or something. You know, it could be something volcanic, something that we uh, use quite often. Mm -hmm. um, but let's show something that we have done for Pyro. Um, and I believe the... The specifically that one height map we have already shown um, in some updates already. Now, mind you, we're not going to see pyro. We're seeing a pyro no, height no, no. map as applied to Microtech. Exactly. So you, you you see how small these graphs are and how simple they are and what, what kind of, sim you know, what cool results we already get from this. You know, this is really powerful because... With just a couple clicks, you know, I can throw a couple nodes, one, two, three, whatever, and then I get a reasonable result from it. So this is what we wanted to achieve. Again, speed, right? Mm -hmm. Speed and quality. Um, and our height maps, like for all the game devs that are, might be watching out there, our height maps are only uh, 1,000 by 1,000, you know, 1K resolution, basically. So uh, it's not like we can push for crazy amounts of detail. No, it's actually 2K, but still... Um, our height maps are uh, 2,000, uh, roughly two by two, and all the other data is one by one. So it's not like we can push for crazy amounts of uh, detail. So this is this is this workflow and this approach we're taking is perfect for us. But let's take a look at a more defined graph. You can see that there's a lot more going on. You know, it's a uh, it, yeah, it's it's, it's a de decently long, um, decently long substance graph but it's it's still super manageable and and uh and okay and the, this is the result we get from this mm -hmm. um let's uh, push this one away because we want to focus on that guy so we have these mountains there's some heavy erosion going on right you can see that we have um we have some some wind erosion or some type of erosion that started eroding one side but not the other indicating that there's there might be some winds going on or um uh, soil sliding down the hill as you can see by these streaks and such uh and something that uh you already mentioned uh, uh jared is you know we can always go back to a node and then change an aspect about it and then generate a completely new height map from this so let's say i'm super happy with the result and everything works as i wanted to and now I'm going to work on pyro and let's say we need 15 of those right because we have 15 no sorry 16 slots right mm -hmm. uh so let's say we need 15 of those okay so i can basically be like okay i'm going to take this um and simply you know change the seed a random seed so it will simply generate a new variation of that very first node but since that changed all the other nodes will change as well and in the end, as you can see now, I'll get a completely different result. Mm -hmm. By just changing a single value, I can produce a completely new height map. Um, again, not something specific to us. This is very, like by now, this is standard in the entire uh, games industry, procedural materials. Um, this, is, this is how uh, most material artists work, uh, but we are applying this to height maps. So now I can, for instance, change this from a basic noise to a billowy noise, and it will again completely alter the look um, of this height map and give me an entirely different result. I can also flatten it out if I want something 
a flatter. Okay, this is a little too extreme, <laughs> right? But uh, let's say um, I go down with the octaves and and restrict the range to something healthier here because not all the mountains are using the entire range of our spectrum. And there we go. See, just by adjusting two things quite quickly, I can produce uh, an entirely new result. If I'm happy with this, I'm exporting it to the editor, which I can do. Validate it on the planet. Oh, I have actually replaced it. So I'm going to get back to it. There it is. Blop. Did I export it? Export again. And of course, it's important to remember that this is a height map that's being designed for the terrain of Pyro and not one that was designed yeah. for the terrain of Microtech. So yeah. uh, the finished result you're going to see here is not exactly uh, the intended. No, this is, yeah, this is just for demonstration purposes, yeah. right? But you can see that parts of the height map are showing and other hearts are hidden because it's blending into all the other height maps. And uh, yeah, as, as we already mentioned a couple of times, all the biomes, all the spruce trees here, um, I can, for, for instance, now take uh, an obsidian area and paint it in here if I like to, right? And change the entire um, biome and object scattering that we have on this specific area. And yeah, this is this is how we go about the creation of height maps. Basically, these procedures, these workflows, going back and forth, validating in substance, validating in the editor, uh, checking if our um, if our biomes are painted down correctly, and if they if the if the data like these streaks here, if it all picks up well, if it's not too noisy, making test drives on these. Right? Will people hate us or not? <laughs> uh, so <laughs> this is. This is basically how we, how we go about these things. Yeah, this is, this is it. And I think we're done, Jared, right? Yeah, we're done. Awesome. Any questions? Any closing? No, we're, we're, we're out of time. You can stop your screen share. Okay, cool. All right, no, that, that's me. That's, oh, that's two of me. Let's go back. Hi. Uh, so, yeah, so Patrick, thank you so much for taking the time uh, to be here on the show with us this week. Um, uh, as, as usual, you know, uh, with uh, Stars in Live, we always like to vacillate between the Q and A shows and the game dev shows, where we showcase your process. And I think I, I really enjoyed it. And I think looking from the chat, uh, the folks really enjoyed taking this look at you know just how 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 something as seemingly simple as a height map, as a little two K texture file, uh, sits at the basis of a whole lot of what they see uh, as the basis of every planet. So that's very cool. Um, as we usually do, we are going to throw uh, the raid to a Star Citizen streamer who's broadcasting right now. Uh, I understand it is the Dark Law. Uh, so if you see, so if you're sitting here and you're watching. <laughs> Uh, live on Twitch, you should see a little raid indicator go up in the chat there. Uh, go ahead and jump in there, and when that starts, tell them uh, what, what 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 should they tell the Dark Law when they raid him, Patrick? What does he do? What what's he up to? Uh, I actually don't know the Dark Law very well. I assume he's a he's a law enforcement person who <laughs> operates at night. Ask him to do limbo or something like that. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I do know he's playing a uh, 311 PTU today, so you can check that out. And uh, just, just, just tell him. Uh, Patrick says. Uh, Patrick says uh, hello. Just saying hi. Right. Take care, everybody. See you next week. Have a nice weekend. Bye. <laughs>